Well, it happens in some countries, but usually not over here. <laughs> so, you're from Italy. Yes, I am. And you're traveling to Tokyo. Yes. Well, welcome to Top Notch Travel Agency. Let me introduce you to my staff, then we'll talk about Tokyo. Marie, I'd like you to meet... George Young Moretti. Oh, you know him. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. What's your name? Uh, my name? Um, uh, uh. Marie. Marie, yes. I'm Marie Lepage. Very nice to meet you, Marie. Marie is our receptionist. She's from Paris. Uh, Mr. Moretti is a new client. He's from Italy. Ah! Giorgio Moretti? Giorgio Moretti? That's Giorgio Moretti! <gasps> yes, I know. He's a new client. He's from Italy. Introduce me. Introduce me. Oh, uh, yes. This is... Cheryl. Cheryl. Yes, Cheryl. She's our... Office manager. Hello, Mr. Giorgio. I mean, Mr. Moretti. Please, call me Giorgio. Call him Giorgio. It's so neat tonight. I mean, nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. Bob! Bob! Come meet Giorgio Moretti! Hey, Giorgio Moretti! Hey, man, how are you? I'm Bob, but everyone calls me Roberto. Bob is a travel agent. Who calls you Roberto? Giorgio Moretti! <laughs> Paul is a tour guide. <laughs> Goodbye, so long. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, but I must be done. Goodbye, so long. <laughs> it's nice to know you, but I'm traveling now. <laughs> so, Mr. Moretti, what is your occupation? He's, He's a, a singer. singer. <laughs> Everyone knows that. <laughs> Mr. Moretti, Marie has some questions for you. Then let's talk about Tokyo. Okay, let's see. Name, Giorgio Moretti. Occupation, singer. Famous singer. Great and famous singer. <laughs> Nationality, Italian. Age, 32. <laughs> Married? No. Single. Phone number? <laughs> this is my information. Everything okay? Come with me, Mr. Moretti. Thank you, Mary. I have Giorgio Moretti's phone number. <laughs> Do you guys want to go out this weekend? There's a great movie playing at the Glenwood. A rock concert sounds better to me. I'd love to see a play. How about an opera? <laughs> okay. There's a rock concert Saturday night at 8 p.m. Blue City is playing. Blue City. I love them. Sounds good. Not my style. I don't like rock. Okay. 
There's a play tonight at midnight at the Second Avenue Theater. It's called Conversations with Food. <laughs> Sounds great. At midnight? That's way past my bedtime. No thanks. Okay. Carmen is playing at the City Opera, 8 p.m. Great. How much are the tickets? You're kidding! Whoa. Oh, no way. Great! It's a movie then! <laughs> a Time to Run is playing at the Glenwood at 7 p.m. A Time to Run? Oh, don't go to that. It's just awful. <laughs> okay. How about You Only Live Once? It's playing at the Kendall, also at 7 p.m. It's terrible. <laughs> An actor's life? Please. Anna goes home? No. The left side of the street? I think there are no more tickets. So what's a good movie to see? There's a French film playing at the Bijou at 8 p.m. I'm not a French film fan. It's a film about an opera singer. Perfect. And a rock star. Great. Who meet at a play. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. You're very welcome. <laughs> It'll be fun, Bob. But I'm not a French film fan. Excuse me, I'm looking for the Rose Cinema. The Rose Cinema. Let's see. Uh, that's on the corner of Market Street and Park Street. Or is it 3rd and Grand? No, I think it's on Market between 1st and 2nd Avenue. Okay, uh, so, go around the corner, walk three blocks, uh, no, uh, five blocks to Harper Street. Turn left. Sorry, right. Go <laughs> oh, another two blocks? No, yes, two blocks. To Fourth Avenue, take a right, yes. Walk about five blocks to Market Street, go right again, go straight, two more blocks, the cinema is on your right. Uh, no, <laughs> sorry, you're left. Paul. What? You're looking for the Rose Cinema? Yes. Go across the street. And? It's across the street. <laughs> Thank you. And you're a tour guide? That's your cousin Teddy. He's a waiter. He's single. And he likes rock music. It's my brother, Eddie. He's a doctor. He's got a wife and two kids, and he likes classical music. How about this one? I don't know. A cousin? No. Your brother? No! An uncle? It's my Aunt Judy! <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Morris. She looks like your uncle. Tell me something about her. She's an architect. Artist. Married. Divorce. Two kids. Three kids. Four ki Five kids? No kids! <laughs> Only eight more. Here's an easy... I don't know. It's my father! I know who your father is. Why are you showing me photos of your father? My family is coming in one hour. Now pay attention. Why do you have such a large family? It's not that large. Not that large! You have six brothers and sisters, 14 aunts and uncles. Who knows how many cousins, nieces, and nephews? I'd say that's a large family. 
They're not all coming over. No, just 18 of them. I'm sorry, honey. I just want them to like you. Calm down. It's okay. You're doing fine. Okay. I'm okay. Your cousin John? Oh! <laughs> That's your sister's husband, Ernie. They live on Park Street. Two kids! Elizabeth is 12 years old, and Katie is eight. <laughs> Ernie's an architect. He likes baseball, basketball, and the movies. Wow. One more. <laughs> your nephew, David. His nickname is Dave. <laughs> he lives on King Street. He's single and he's a student. He loves to travel. He likes jazz and he doesn't like fish. You're amazing. Very nice. Oh, it's almost six. Bob, would you wipe off the counter? I'll be in the bathroom for a while. Bob. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Come on in. Where are the tickets? They're printing, okay? Mr. Evans needs them right now. The client is coming in five minutes. This printer is driving me crazy. It's so slow. Try blowing on it. What? Really? Try it. Now tap the sides. Just try it. Now rub this side gently. Does this really work? Where are the tickets? They're printing, okay? Mr. Evans needs them, now. The client is coming in four minutes. Easy there, Jackie Chan. <laughs> we need a new printer. Aren't we getting a new printer? You're buying the new printer, aren't you? This is the new printer. This piece of junk is new? Well, it's new to us. <laughs> This is an old printer? Just a little old. What kind is it? Is it a Comprite? Mr. Evans says always buy a Comprite. It's a print okay. A print okay? <laughs> What's a print okay? Do you know that brand? It's a good brand and very inexpensive. We need the tickets now. Do something! Oh. Where are the tickets? They're printing, okay? The client's coming up in one minute. The printer's a little slow today. Okay, then now stop! What? Don't come near this printer. What's the problem? You know machines don't work when you're around. That's not true. Is your laptop working? No, it won't turn on. Is your cell phone working? No, it's 11. Is your PDA working? No, but... I... Stay away! Come on! Paul, we need these tickets right away. We're printing the last ticket. Please, do not come near this printer. The printer won't stop working just because... <laughs> oh, God. The client is here. Oh. Where are the tickets? Right here, sir. Thank you. There are only nine. Where's the last one? Uh, right here, sir. Thank you. 
What? The printer isn't working. What? Go across the hall to Mr. Lee's office. Ask to print one ticket on his printer. Not you. You're sitting here until all the tickets are printed. ready to order? We are. Excuse me, I have a question. Yes. I'm in the mood for lamb, but the sauce looks too fatty. Could I order the lamb without the sauce? Sure. What does it come with? French fries. I don't like fried food. Could I have a grilled vegetable instead? I think we have grilled peppers. Perfect. Would you like to start with an appetizer? Is there oil on the tomato salad? There's a lot of olive oil, yes. Could I get it without the oil? Mm-hmm. But it won't taste very good. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll just have a mixed green salad. And you? I'm sorry. I have another question. Is there salt on the lamb? It's cooked with salt and pepper, yes. I don't want a lot of salt. I think I'll have the fish instead. What's in the sauce? Lemon, butter, milk. Oh, that's too much dairy. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a large salad for my entree a no appetizer. What's in the salad? Lettuce, carrots, peppers, onions, egg. Oh, no egg, please. Salad, no egg. Anything to drink? Mm, just water, please. And for you? I'll have the special. The special. The special. Wait, could I ask you another question? No. no. This is delicious. Mm. Amazing! Cheryl, don't you want to try it? No, thanks. Too many calories. And we need to go. I'll ask for the check. <laughs> I love dessert. Do you know how many calories are in that cake? No. And don't tell me. <laughs> or how much fat was in your steak and your fried shrimp? Or how much salt was on your french fries. Do you want us to just eat raw vegetables? Vegetables are good. Or how about smaller portions and no dessert? No dessert? You need to take care of your body. <laughs> eat healthy food. Have vegetables for snacks instead of potato chips and cookies. You're right. Tomorrow I'm eating lots of vegetables. Really? For snacks. And I'm having potato chips, cookies, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> You're terrible. What are you doing? I'm trying to get the check. Finally. <laughs> Do you want that? What are you doing? I'm exercising. Don't you have some work to do? I am working. I'm working and exercising. What work are you doing? I'm thinking. About what? About ideas for Mrs. Beatty's vacation. And what are you thinking? Beach vacation! <laughs> I have to finish this. Can you go exercise somewhere else? No problem. <laughs> doing? I'm getting in shape. Why are you doing that here? Why don't you go to a gym? Or the park? Or outside? Or home? I don't have time to go to the gym.
I can't work when you do that. Can you go over there? No problem. <laughs> Bob, <laughs> what are you doing? I'm working. Then why are you running? To get in shape. Running burns a lot of calories. Exercise later. Work now, please. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm meeting a client at the cafe for lunch, Marie. Okay. So, what do you do to stay in shape? I generally go running in the morning. I do aerobics two nights a week. I always play tennis or golf on the weekends. And I usually go bike riding every Sunday if the weather is good. You don't lift weights? No. Oh, you have to lift weights to really stay in shape. I don't like to go to a gym. You don't have to go to a gym to lift weights. You can lift weights anywhere like this. Or this. Or even this. Oh. Maybe not that. Thanks for the suggestions. Hey, why don't we go running together sometime? Okay, where do you run? To the park. And back. Oh. Where do you run? To the park. And then to the market. Then to Symphony Hall. Then to Harper Street. <laughs> then to the library. Then to the theater. And then back. Oh. So, do you want to go running after work today? Gotta meet a friend for dinner. Some other time then. Yeah, sure. Hey, can you answer the phones for a while? I have to go to the post office and you're the only one here. No problem. That is so cute. Thank you. I love that color. Bob, what do you think of our new clothes for the party tomorrow? There's a party tomorrow? It's Mr. Evans' birthday, remember? All right. Am I going? <laughs> yes, you are. OK. So tell us what you think of our new clothes. All those clothes are for one party? No. We have to decide what to wear. What do you think of these blouses? They're very flattering. Which one do you like more? What do you mean? Which one do you prefer? I like them both the same. No, you don't. You're just saying that. You need to have an opinion. You have to choose. No, no, no. I'm not doing that. Bob, please help us decide what to wear. Okay. Which skirt do you like? The red one. Great. That's not so hard, is it? Which shoes look better? Those. <laughs> Which sweater do you prefer? I like the purple one. Bob, you like Marie's clothes more than mine. No, I don't. That's not true. <laughs> then which dress do you prefer? That one. This is Marie's dress, too. What's wrong with my clothes? Nothing. Nothing. I, I like your clothes. 
I like Marie's clothes. I like everything. I like all dresses and all sweaters and all skirts and all shoes. Who asked you anyway? You do. So, what are you going to wear to the party tomorrow night? A uh, t-shirt and jeans. <laughs> A t-shirt and jeans? No way. You have to wear something nicer. I don't have anything nicer. You do now. All that's for me. What do you think of these? Do you have anything looser? Yep. Too wild for me. Anything else? Here you go. I don't know. Those look pretty warm. Something cooler would be good. Why don't we look at shirts? <laughs> Not bad. But it's pretty conservative, isn't it? I love this one. That doesn't look very comfortable. <laughs> Try this. That looks a little cheap. <laughs> Do you have anything more expensive? It. I'm taking it all back to the store. But what am I wearing tomorrow? Just wear a t-shirt and jeans. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Rashid. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. How is your vacation? It was wonderful. I'm so happy to hear that. Was your flight okay? No, pretty bad, actually. It was so bumpy. It was very scary. Well, that's too bad. Did you have nice weather after you arrived? No, the weather was terrible, very rainy. I actually never saw the sun. That's awful. So what did you do? I stayed inside the hotel. Was the hotel room nice? The room was fine, but it was right next to the cafe, and the music was very loud. I didn't sleep much. I'll bet the food was great. No, it was too salty for me, and the waiters were very unfriendly. Did you go shopping at all? A little bit, until someone stole my wallet. <laughs> After that, I stayed in the hotel and read a book. Was the flight home okay? Actually, they canceled my flight. I had to stay for two more days. That's terrible. But, Mr. Rashid, you said that your vacation was wonderful. Ah, uh, yes, I did. And it was wonderful. I met a very nice person. A woman, actually. Her name is Basmar. She's from Lebanon, just like me. But she lives here. I'm seeing her tonight, so yes. It was a wonderful vacation. That's great, Mr. Rashid. <laughs> yes. Mr. Rashid, welcome back. Come tell me about your vacation. What a terrible vacation Mr. Rashid had. Oh. You know, on my vacation last year, someone stole my car. That was a horrible vacation. I went on a cruise, and there was an outbreak of illness. I was in my room for a week. That was a really bad vacation. I went to Disney World, and someone stole my map. That's your worst vacation? It took ten minutes to get another map. All right. What was your favorite vacation? I spent two weeks in the Caribbean last year, diving, snorkeling, and swimming with dolphins. It was amazing. I went to China a few years ago. It was incredible. The people there were so friendly, and everyone wanted to practice their English with me. I went to the beach and ate shrimp. <laughs> That's your best vacation? I really like shrimp. Uh, you 
need to go on more exciting vacations. I don't like exciting vacations. In fact, I don't like to travel very much. Then why do you work in a travel agency? It's across the street from my apartment. So I don't have to travel far to go to work. <laughs> so, Mrs. Beatty, we should talk about your safari trip to Botswana. I'm so excited. My first time in Africa. You're going to be flying in to Johannesburg, South Africa. Would you like a window or an aisle? Oh, a window. I want to see everything. In Johannesburg, you should take a taxi or a limo to your hotel. The next day, you could fly or you could take a train to Francistown in Botswana. Is it an express train? Yes. I'll take the train. I'd like to see the country. Great. Then after you see Francistown, you can take a small plane or a bus to the Okavanga Delta. How small is the airplane? It's pretty small. I'll take the bus. Is it an express bus? I think so. When you get to Gumare, you're going to be taking a boat to your hotel. A boat? The hotel is on an island. When you get to the island, a man with a donkey can take your luggage to the hotel. A donkey? There are no cars on the island. Is it an express donkey? I think it's probably a local donkey. Of course, if you don't want the donkey, you could take a small plane. It goes straight to the hotel. I think I should take the donkey. Donkeys never have mechanical problems, right? Right. South Africa. Hello, Mrs. Beatty. Why, hello, Paul. <laughs> Where are you traveling to now? Mrs. Beatty is going on a safari in the Okavanga Delta in Botswana. Nice. Are you flying in or are you taking the train, bus, boat, donkey route? <laughs> I'm going to be taking the donkey. I did that once myself. You did? Was it very exciting? Oh, it was. On the way there, the plane had mechanical problems. That sounds scary. We got in late. And I missed the train to Francistown, so I decided to take a bus. But I got on the local bus by mistake. I don't like local buses. Then the bus had an accident. So I rented a car, but it broke down. Oh, dear. I got to Gamari two days late. Then I got seasick on the boat to the island. Oh, my. Did you have any problems with the donkey? I got bumped from the donkey. You mean they overbooked the donkey? No, I mean the donkey bumped me off the road to the hotel. Hee-haw, hee-haw! Ah! <laughs> oh, but it was a very exciting trip. You'll love Africa. So, any questions, Mrs. Beatty? Just one. How much is a ticket to Paris? <laughs> Here comes Bob. Yeah, he wants to sell me his digital camera. Hi. How was dinner? Great. What do you have there? The best digital camera money can buy. Paul, that's the same camera you look... Why are you selling it? I have two. Cheryl gave me another one for my birthday. It's not bad. How much do you want? Two hundred and fifty dollars. Wow, that's a great... That's more than I want to pay. But that's less than... I can give you two hundred for it. No, I need at least two forty-five. Sorry, all I have is two ten. There's an ATM, right? I could go as low as two thirty, but that's it. Sorry. Thanks anyway. All right. I'll sell it to somebody else. What are you doing? You almost bought that camera yesterday for $300. You don't know how to bargain, do you? 
bargain? Of course I know how to bargain. You don't know how to bargain. You could buy that camera for $230, but now it's gone. All right. You can have it for $225. 220. 224. 221. 223. 222. Not a dollar more. I'm not selling this for less than $223. Here. Here's one dollar. <laughs> now you both get what you want. It's a deal. I'll get some money from the ATM. Great! You said I don't know how to bargain. Thanks. Thanks for dinner. My pleasure. I saved a lot of money on the camera. Should I leave the tip? No. I'll put it on the credit card. Five dollars? That's not enough. Sure it is. The bill was fifty dollars. That's only 10%. So? Didn't you like the food? It was good. Was there a problem with the service? No. Then you need to leave at least 15%. No, I don't. Paul, we come here all the time. The waitress gives us great service because we usually tip well. I always leave 10%. Have a nice evening. We're not quite ready. No problem. Look, I'm paying tonight, so I get to decide how much to tip. Oh, all right. Hey, isn't that Mr. Evans over there? Where? <laughs> Never mind. It's someone else. Shall we go? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You're welcome. This is Ms. Novak. She's from Chicago. Marie is our receptionist. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. I'll get your tickets. Thank you. You look very familiar to me, Marie. Have we met before? I don't think so, no. Well, I never forget a face. I'm sure I know you from somewhere. I don't look familiar to you. I'm sorry, no. I know. We met in Chicago. You were a waitress in a restaurant near the Art Institute. I've never been to Chicago. Oh. Have you ever driven a taxi in Egypt? <laughs> no. Oh, you were the pilot 
on a small airplane in China. You flew me over the Great Wall. Oh, no. Have you ever gone snorkeling in Australia? No. Driven a bus in Peru? No. Ms. Novak, I'm quite sure we've never met before. I came here only a year ago from Paris. Paris? Well, my sister Katerina lived there for a year. Katerina? Katerina Novak? Yes. She lived with me. Of course, you were in all the pictures she sent home. <laughs> What a coincidence. You see, I never forget a face. <laughs> I have your tickets. Oh, thank you. Did you know that Marie knows my sister, Katerina? Really? It's a small world, isn't it? So, are you going sightseeing before you leave? No, I'm going back to the hotel to read. What? You're visiting our great city and you're not even going to see it? I've come here once a month for eight years. I've seen it all before. I'm sure I can think of something you haven't seen. I think you're wrong. Have you visited the Riley Museum of Art? Twenty times. Hmm. Have you ever been to the top of the Olsen Building? Just last month. Have you eaten at Andre's Cafe? Twice. Ever been to Cold Beach? Yes. <laughs> Seen the City Opera? Yes. <laughs> Toured the Japanese Gardens? Yes. <laughs> You can't have done everything in this city. I'm afraid it's true. Have you ever visited the Museum of Cheese? There's no Museum of Cheese. Aha. Uh -huh. It is really amazing. Everyone goes there. I can't believe you haven't been there yet. <laughs> Marie, could you call the Museum of Cheese and reserve tickets for Ms. Novak and me? You're not serious. I am. It's at the corner of 7th and Oak. I'll see you there at 4. Okay. I'll see you there. Thank you. Goodbye, Marie. Say hello to Katrina for me. Goodbye. Bye. Mr. Evans, is there really a museum of cheese at 7th and Oak? <laughs> it's a wonderful little cheese shop. They have every kind of cheese. Some of it's very old. So, yes, I'd say it's a museum of cheese. <laughs> There's no back in London. Give us another one, Marie. We're running out of time. Oh, there she is. I'm sorry I'm late. I couldn't find a parking space. Have you been here long? Since yesterday. <laughs> but it's no problem. The waiter brought us food, and, and we slept on the floor. Have you chosen a movie yet? We've been trying. Unfortunately, these guys have seen almost everything. We like the movies. What about the action film, The Last Train to Hong Kong? Where's this train going? <laughs> Believe me, you'd rather not know. We're going to Hong Kong, aren't we? rather stay here and fight the hundred men? No, but I've always wanted to see Hong Kong. Look out! We've been doing this for a half hour. That looks a little too violent for me. What about on the bridge? I hear it's great. You're late, Frederick. I'm sorry. And I've waited for you for so long. I... Got stuck in traffic. For two years? Very romantic. How about the horror movie, The Hand? I've just returned from the train station. Have you seen anything lately? No. We should go inside. Good idea. I don't want to see that terrible hand. Do you really think there's a hand out there that... Oh, stop doing that right now, and the movie tickets are my treat. Deal! <laughs> I'm not buying you popcorn. Oh, come on. So 
So, what do you want to do? Mm. No. Hey, isn't that David Doolittle, the famous British actor? You're right, it is. Let's go say hi. No! <laughs> what are you doing? Aren't you David Doolittle? Well, yes, I am. Wow, we really like your movies. Thank you. You're great. Thank you very much. Remember that movie where you were that dancer? What was that called? The Dancer. That's it. That was unforgettable. I love that one where you're the chef. What's that one called? Dr. Fork. <laughs> that was so funny. Unforgettable, man. Thank you. My favorite is the one where you're that robot musician named DD42. Yeah, oh, I just saw that movie again last week. That's a great movie. What's that called? Songs of Love. Yeah, man, that's unforgettable. <laughs> Thanks. You know what? I have to go soon and I should finish my lunch. Oh, right. Yeah, sorry. It was nice to meet you. Well, you too. Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> Isn't that what you say at the end of that movie where you're the pilot? Uh, pie in the sky. Yeah, that was unforgettable, man. Unforgettable. <laughs> Would you guys care to join me? <gasps> What's your favorite? Hello, top-notch travel. Um, one moment, please. Hello, top-notch. Uh, just a moment, please. <laughs> top-notch. Uh, hold, please. Hello? Hi, Mrs. Beatty. Cheryl? I'm afraid Cheryl's not here. You're not satisfied with your hotel. No bellman. I'm sorry. Cheryl will call you back. Okay. Goodbye. Hello? Uh, yes, hello, Mr. Rashid. Uh, Cheryl's not here. Can I take a message? You want a cheaper hotel in Budapest? A hotel without breakfast is okay. Very good. I'll give Cheryl your message. Goodbye. Hello? Oh, hi, Ms. Novak. She'll be right back. Is there a message? Can your cat stay with you at your hotel in Rio? <laughs> and you'd like to reserve a king-size bed. I'll ask her to check and call you. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, you're back. I have three messages for you. Let's see. Mrs. Beatty wants a cheaper cat. <laughs> Mr. Rashid isn't satisfied with his breakfast. <laughs> and... Ms. Novak thinks the bellman needs a king-size bed. <laughs> They'll explain it all to you. What? I'd like to speak to a guest. Mrs. Beatty in room 514. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Beatty. This is Cheryl from Top Notch. How's Los Angeles? Well, the hotel isn't very nice, dear. I'm sorry to hear that. Are you okay? You sound tired. My room is on the fifth floor. 
I had to walk up with my luggage. There's no bellman? No elevator? No. And I wanted a non-smoking room with a king-size bed. And I requested that for you. Well, they gave me a smoking room with a twin-sized bed. It's all they have. I'd better check your reservation. What hotel are you at? The Candle Inn, I think. And another thing. They didn't make up the room. The towels are dirty. Did you call housekeeping? They're not answering. And there are all these students everywhere. I thought you said that movie stars stay at this hotel. Mrs. Beatty, your reservation is for the Chandler Inn. You're in the wrong hotel. The Chandler Inn is a much nicer hotel. Oh, well, I'd better call a taxi. How will you get your bags to the front desk? I'm sure I can find a student to help. I'll say I'm a movie star. I'll be fine. Okay. Good luck. Goodbye. Hello. Paul, what's happened to you? I had an accident with the van. Oh no, are you okay? I'm fine. I was wearing my seatbelt. No one was hurt, but I think we're gonna need a new van. Well, what happened? I was driving on 6th Street, and there were a lot of fish on the road. A lot of what? Fish. <laughs> Why were there fish in the road? I don't know. Anyway, I tried to turn, but I had a problem with the steering wheel. The steering wheel broke? No. It came off. <laughs> so I drove over the fish. The fish made the road slippery, so I tried to stop. I hit a parked car. Oh, no. I'm not finished. The car behind me was tailgating, so he hit me. A car on the opposite side of the road hit a stop sign. The stop sign fell and smashed my hood. Oh, no. Then, worst of all, when I got out to look at the damage, a piano fell on the van. <laughs> what? Where did it come from? I don't know, but the van does not look good. The bumpers are damaged, so is the hood, the doors won't open, the windows won't close, the engine's not working, the, the headlights are smashed, the horn won't honk, and it smells like fish. <laughs> are there any parts that are okay? The steering wheel still looks good. <laughs> Great. All we need is a van to go with it. <laughs> We're going to need a van this afternoon. You're taking the tourist from Chile to the museum. I'll call the rental company. Are you hungry? Yeah. Want some of my fish sandwich? <laughs> oh, sorry. Guess not. <laughs> Hi. Is this auto rent? I need a rental car. A van. Do you rent vans? That's great. We'll need to pick it up right away. We'll probably need it for two weeks. Could we return it on the 15th of the month? Great. Four-wheel drive. I could take the group from France to the mountains. Do you have any four-wheel drive vans? They don't have four-wheel drive vans. How about a luxury van with DVD player and stereo? Do you have any luxury vans with DVD and stereo? Stereo, yes. DVD, no. How about a convertible van? Yes, <laughs> Do you have any convertible vans? <laughs> What color do you want? 
Blue? No. Red? No. Green? White will be fine. Insurance? Yes, we'd like insurance. Lots and lots of insurance, please. Cheryl, your hair looks gorgeous. Thank you. I have a new shampoo. Bright and clean. I'd like to try it. Did you find it at the drugstore? No. I bought it at my salon on Friday. I'll pick some up for you next time I'm there. Great. Thanks. Would you like some too, Bob? I have shampoo. Thanks. But mine will make your hair softer and cleaner smelling. Um, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> Come on, Bob. Don't you care about how you look? Of course I do. I shampoo, shower, and shave every day. That's all? Is there more to do? Don't you use any skin care products? Body lotion or skin cream? No. Should I? If you want your skin to stay young and healthy. Do you use any conditioner? That's for women. Lots of men use it too. Really? Sure. Women like men who take care of their appearance. Really? Okay. Uh, well, what else should I do? You don't want me to wear makeup, do you? <laughs> Lipstick, mascara, eyeshadow? No. But how about a manicure? <laughs> I'm serious. Look at your nails. They're a mess. Men get manicures? Many do, yes. We can give you one right here. Really? Piece of cake. Well... Okay, great! <laughs> then we can talk about your haircut, facial, and facelift. What? <laughs> what is this stuff on my face? It makes your skin soft and smooth. It tastes terrible. Oh. Sorry. I can't believe you cut my hair. And what'd you put in it? Some hairspray. Hairspray? Not much. You'll like it. There. Wow! My nails look great. Could I get a pedicure too? <laughs> no. My hair looks great too. See what a little personal care can do. Wow, thank you so much. You know, it's customary to tip the person who gives you a haircut. How do I look? Good. You look really, really good. You look amazing. Then let's get pizza. My treat. Great! <laughs> you can never tell anyone about this. Especially the facial. Deal. Now when can I get an appointment for another manicure? <laughs> Everything's ready. Why don't we sit down? This smells so wonderful. What are we having to eat? There's roast chicken, baked potatoes, salad, broccoli with garlic, red cabbage, and rice. Help yourself, everyone. Wow. That's a lot of vegetables. <laughs> vegetables are very healthy for you. Mr. Evans, would you like some chicken? Just a little, thank you. I'm not a big chicken eater. <laughs> How about some potatoes? I'm sorry. I'm avoiding potatoes. <laughs> Some broccoli? I'll pass. 
I'm afraid it doesn't agree with me. Cabbage. Sorry. I I'm allergic. <laughs> Mr. Evans, I'm so sorry. There's very little here for you to eat. I'm crazy about rice. <laughs> well, then, pass the rice, please. Cheryl, this tastes so delicious. Bob, you're not eating very much tonight. Don't you like the food? Bob's on a diet. I'm trying to lose weight. Good for you, Bob. I'm on a diet, too. <laughs> Why are you on a diet? You're so skinny. I'm trying to gain weight. <laughs> I can't stand it. Bob! Cheryl, that was fantastic. The rice was terrific. Cookies, anyone? Yes. One, please. I'll take two, thanks. Or three. <laughs> Do you eat sweets, Mr. Evans? I used to, but I can't anymore. <laughs> no dessert for you, Bob? Not on his diet. But weren't you eating cookies today at work? I was eating carrots. Didn't I see you snacking on candy this afternoon? That was an apple. What about that ice cream you ate yesterday? Fruit salad. My mistake. These cookies are terrific. If you like the cookies, you'll love this cake. Oh. Would you eat some strawberries, Mr. Evans? Strawberries are my passion. Really? I'd eat strawberries on anything. <laughs> Cereal, pasta, even rice. I'm <laughs> crazy about chocolate cake. I can gain weight with every bite. I think I'll have a cookie. Bob, could you pass the... Oh. Where'd they go? I have one. I have four. I have none. What do you think about this color? What is that color? It's tomato red. How does this color make you feel? Happy. Sad. Tired. I don't feel like looking at any more colors. <laughs> Quit complaining. How about this one? Happy. <laughs> Sad. Awful. I can't stand looking at it. Do you plan to do this all night? This one. Be sure to look carefully. Sad. Happy. 
very, very nervous. Nervous about what? I'm nervous you're going to paint the whole wall that color. It's my apartment, Bob. Yeah, but we come here a lot. Can we discuss leaving the walls just like this? I'm tired of looking at yellow walls. Fine. Can you at least choose a color we'll all be excited about? There is no color you all like. Paul's feeling happy about everything. <laughs> Marie's feeling sad about everything. And you just seem to hate color, don't you, Bob? I love color. Just not those colors. <laughs> okay. Then why don't you find a color that everybody likes? What do you think of this color? I like it. I like it too, actually. I love it. I'm not painting the walls the same color as my sofa. The whole room would be green. You could change the color of the sofa. To what? The color of the walls would be a nice color. Marie, you've been so quiet. Are you okay? I'm just a little down in the dumps. Oh, I'm sorry. We've been arguing about colors and you're feeling blue. Hmm, blue. <laughs> What's wrong, Marie? Don't know. I can't put my finger on it. I've just been feeling out of sorts. Don't worry. I can help. Dr. Cheer is here. Dr. Who? At school, people call me Dr. Cheer because I'm always happy and I enjoy cheering people up. You know that's true? You're always cheering me up. <laughs> How do you do that? I practice laughing every day. Laughing at what? Nothing. <laughs> I just choose to laugh. <laughs> you just decide to laugh? I can't do that. It's not in my nature. How do you know? Just try it. Let me hear you laugh. Ha ha. Louder. Ha ha. Come on, keep laughing. <laughs> You're right. It's not your personality. What now, Dr. Cheer? Chocolate? Yes! Works every time. <laughs> Everyone. You remember Ms. Novak? Hello. Hello. Hi. Ms. Novak has just opened an art gallery here. I've asked her to find some pieces to decorate our office. She's brought some things for us to look at today. I have a painting, a sculpture, and a photograph that I think you'll like. Here's the painting. <laughs> this was painted by a Russian artist that I really like. It's called Sun on the Water. The artist was inspired by looking at the sea. What do you think? I think I could do that. Oh. It's fantastic. How interesting. It's very blue. Yes. It's gorgeous. Oh, good. Here's the sculpture. It was made by a British sculptor. It's called City of Gold. Is it really gold? No, it's made of wood. It was painted gold. What do you think? It's cool. Mr. Evans, I think it would look good in your office. 
I preferred the painting. I'm fascinated by it. Good. And here's the photograph. <laughs> it's called Winter. It was photographed in Paris. There's nothing there. It's a photograph of snow in a park. Maybe I should buy them all. What do you think? Great! Hey, look. I'm an artist. Here's my latest work. It's called Office Walls. It was inspired by looking at the walls of the office. Are you a photographer? Yes. Uh, well, no. I, I take a lot of pictures. Oh. Hmm. Well, I'm not so crazy about that one. <laughs> but I do like what you've done here. Oh, I'm very moved by it, actually. It's a fascinating mixture of Eastern and Western traditions. You have talent. I do. I think I could sell this. Really? It's very good. I'm crazy about photography. Well, do you have any more of your work here? Uh, no. Oh. Here's my card. Why don't you bring me some pieces on Friday? Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> so, where are we going to put this thing? Hang it by my desk. Really? Yeah. As an artist, I'm really starting to like it. As a matter of fact, I think it's one of the most interesting works I've ever seen. <laughs> Bob, can you help me with something? Sure. I'm trying to print a file, but the printer won't work. Push the green button on the printer. Why? To turn it on. It won't print unless it's on. <laughs> oh, right. Silly me. Thank you. Hey, Bob. My laptop crashed and I can't get it to do anything. I, I type on the keyboard and nothing happens. Stick this here. Why? To restart the computer. You sure? Okay, thanks. Bob, I could use a hand with something. What is it? Somebody sent me an email, but I think it has a virus in it. Don't open the attachment. Click on the no virus icon on the toolbar. Why? To clean the computer and stop the virus. Thanks. <laughs> Bob, can I ask you another question? I'm sorry, but I can't get any work done with all these questions. Please, I have some very important stuff I need to finish right now. Game over. Game over. Very important stuff? Game over. Game over. How can I help you? Hey, Mr. Evans? Yes? You asked me to build a website for the company? Oh, yes. How's it coming along? Well, sir, I, I think I need some new technology. What do you need? A new scanner. What's that? It's a scanner, sir, but it's not nearly as good as this one. This one would give us much better photos. Okay. And a digital camera would be good. What's that? 
It's not a digital camera, sir. It won't take pictures as easily as this one. Okay. And also a new laptop. <laughs> it's not as fast as this one. I see. Anything else? A new DVD drive. <laughs> and I could also use a new joystick. A joystick? Isn't that for computer games? Well, I don't really need the joystick. What's all this going to cost me? What? Well, actually, we could do without the DVD drive. And the laptop. And the camera. And the scanner. Great. <laughs> Do you have a favorite genre of movie? I love drama. I love comedy, but my, my favorite is drama. Do you think there's too much violence in movies? I think sometimes some films portray violence a little too graphically, but I feel that um, if it helps the plot along um, and there's sort of a point to the violence, then it's okay, but unnecessary violence really turns me off. So do you choose to go see movies if you know they're going to be violent? I usually tend to see films that get good reviews or are by uh, filmmakers whom I admire. I don't think violence would really, you know, sway me one way or the other. Do you ever go to see violent movies yourself? Yes, I've seen violent movies, um, thrillers and, and movies of that nature. Can violent movies be dangerous? I think people are dangerous. I don't know that movies are dangerous. Should children be allowed to see violent movies? No, I don't think children need to be watching violent movies, so. What's your feeling about violence? Is it harmful, particularly to children? Um, it, it, I think violence is um, harmful, um, especially in movies. movies. Children of certain ages should not see uh, violent movies because they're a little more influential and um, don't have the uh, judgment skills that adults do. Could you tell me um, some of the things that are important to you in a hotel, such as um, a fitness center, or a pool, a gift shop, a restaurant, a business center? I look more for location in a hotel than anything, is, anything else. So I want it to be close and convenient to whatever I'm doing in town. If I'm there to enjoy myself, uh, for example, then I want to be near the beach. Uh, so um, location is more important to me than anything else. I don't pay too much attention to the she hotel. She likes uh, one bed. <laughs> she doesn't like twin beds. Uh, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of hotels. If, they ha if they're comfortable, I'm happy with it. When you stay in a hotel, do you use room service? No, I try not to use room service because I like to get out and see a little bit of the town or the city that I'm staying in. Thinking about a really good hotel experience, could you tell me about that? Really what makes a hotel special is the are the people who work there. If people there are very nice and friendly and people say good morning and know you by name and they, they, when you come back to the hotel they greet you and they ask you how your day was and they just make the difference. If, if when I stayed in a hotel I had, um, I had a bellman bring me flowers that were left over and put them in my room and those are those little touches that I think make your experience or you stay in a hotel much more pleasant than when you just stay anywhere else. How about a worst hotel experience? Well, um, I have had experiences more, on more than one occasion where I've been in a room next to people that are rather noisy and so that can be, that can be a distraction especially when you've got to be up early in the morning. Who are you most like in terms of personality? My mother. And why do you say that? Outgoing. She smiles a lot. Do you have any brothers or sisters? One brother 
to three sisters. Okay, and, and how are you different? Is say one more extroverted than the other, or more introverted? Uh, well, I'm quiet, calm. I don't really get excited over things, and just take it easy. I don't let things bother me a lot. While my sisters, they will get excited and get upset, and uh, so I'm not like that. Okay, how about first children? Do you think that they have certain traits that they share? Well, I think my brother, being the oldest and the only boy, was allowed to get away with things a lot more than my sister and I. And what I mean by that is, um, as the oldest and as a boy, he was able to go to concerts at an earlier age than my sister or I. Um, he kind of got out of household duties uh, that my sister and I had because he was babysitting us. And how about if you're the last in a big family? Do you think that uh, you get special benefits from that? <laughs> yeah, you get clothes. <laughs> what about birth order? Do you think that makes a difference who's the oldest and who's the youngest? Um, I don't think so. Not important? I don't think it's important. It's just the personality. If you got a bill in a restaurant that was obviously wrong, what would you do? I would tell the waitress and ask her if everything's okay. I think they should tell the waiter. And what should they tell them? Um, that um, they're given too much change or they're undercharged. How about if a person's shopping in a department store and uh, an expensive piece of clothing has a tag on it that's obviously wrong, it's priced too low. Uh, would that, should that person tell the cashier or just pay for it? I usually ask. That's me, though. <laughs> well, I, I would go to the cashier, or I think everybody should go to the cashier at least and ask, is that right? And if he says it's right, then at least you tried it. And then suppose you found some cash on the street, not in a wallet, just some cash lying on the street. What would you do with it? I'd pick it up and put it in my pocket. <laughs> I usually do not pick up money if a very poor person is around, because I think a poor person needs it more than I do. So I leave it lying there. So are the three situations, the restaurant, the department store, and the cash on the street, the same or different? I think each one is different. Why? Um, you make judgments all the time, and not everything is equal. If you haven't eaten dinner, are you in the mood 
for a meal you won't forget Bow down, shake hands Do whatever you do in your native land I'll be happy to greet you in any way that you understand Greetings and small talk Make the world go round On every winding road I've walked This is what i found Thank you. 
Can I have that information for Mr. Rashid's group? He'll be here in a few minutes. I'm working as fast as I can. Mr. Evans will be with you very soon. That's fine. I'm a little early, aren't I? Just a few minutes. Is your last name pronounced LePage? It's Lepage, actually. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Now, is it Ms. Lepage or Mrs. Lepage? Um, it's Ms. But you can call me by my first name. Do you mind if I call you Ms. Lepage? I love the way it sounds. <laughs> that's fine. I'm keeping you from your work, aren't I? I'm sorry. I'd love to talk, but I really have to get this done right away. I understand. You're not from here, are you? Excuse me? Your accent. You come from France, don't you? Yes. Paris, actually. That's nice. It sure is a beautiful day, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Can I have that information? I'm not quite done. What's taking so long? <laughs> Mrs. Beatty, I can take you to Mr. Evans' office. He'll be here shortly. Why, thank you. Beautiful day, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Paul, 
We have our first group from India coming next week. Mm -hmm. Since Mr. Rashid has traveled to India many times, I've asked him to talk to you about etiquette in India. Mr. Rashid. Paul, why don't you greet me as if I were an Indian tourist? Ask me to come with you and show me to the tour bus. Okay. Uh, hi there. I'm Paul. Oh, if I were an Indian woman, you would have just insulted me. Women and men generally do not touch. Okay. Uh, hi there. You just told me to go away. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, too close. You should stand this far away from someone. Instead of shaking hands, do this and say, Namaste. Namaste. Excellent. Now, tell me to come with you to the tour bus. Okay, come with me. This is a rude gesture in India. Do it like this. Come with me. Good, good. To the bus over there. I know, I just insulted you. <laughs> Pointing with your fingers is considered impolite. Use your chin instead. To the bus over there. I'm never going to get this. Well, you're doing wonderfully. Oh, thank you, Mr. Oh, too close. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Ms. Novak's tickets ready. She may be stopping by this afternoon. Paul, are you okay? No, I feel awful. What's wrong? I've got this horrible cold. I'm sneezing. And my back is killing me. I've got this pain at my hip. My neck's been bothering me all day. And I have a stomach ache. You may have to go see a doctor. No, I hate doctors. I wonder what could be wrong. Maybe he's allergic to work. <laughs> I'm not kidding here. I'm in pain. I used to want to be a doctor, you know. Say, ah. Ah, shoot! <laughs> now I remember why I didn't become a doctor. Oh. Paul, you really must get some medical help. A little acupuncture might help you feel better. Stay away from me. Dr. Anderson is meeting Mr. Evans downstairs in the cafe. Should we ask her to come up? She may be able to help. Great idea. I'll go get her. You might prefer an herbal remedy? <laughs> Stop it. How long have you been feeling this way? Oh, I got the cold last night, and the pain in my back started this morning. Want to try a little spiritual <laughs> healing? You're making me laugh. <laughs> a laughter's the best oh, medicine, you know. Oh, but it hurts. <laughs> Say ah. Cover your face, Doc. <laughs> ah. Ah. Well, ah. you have a cold, that's for sure. What about the other stuff, the pain in the back and the side? Well, have you taken any medications lately? Just some over-the-counter stuff. Uh, Painkiller, cold tablets, uh, nasal spray. Well, that sounds okay. And some uh, cough medicine, vitamins, and acid. That's a lot of medicine. And some uh, decongestant. That's too much medicine in one day. That must be why you're feeling so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been around anyone else who's sick? Uh, my friend Donna's had a cold all week. We lifted weights last night for about an hour, and ran five miles. He had to walk the last mile. Is that your usual exercise routine? Yep. I started it yesterday. <laughs> well, that explains it. You exercised too much. That's all? That's all. A little chiropractic treatment might help you. Uh, stay away from me. <laughs> Now, about the travel documents for the Australian group. We've had everything mailed to them, right? Mr. Evans, we gave you the package of travel documents to give to Mr. Wells the other night at dinner before he flew home to Sydney. A white envelope about this big? Yes. I gave it to Mr. Rashid before he left for Lebanon. Oh, Mr. Wells needs those documents the day after tomorrow. His group is flying in on, on Thursday. I'll call the courier. If they can pick up a package by 5 p.m., we should be okay. That gives us an hour. I'll reprint the tour information, but what about the travel guides? I can't print 25 copies that fast. I'll call copies to go and have them reprint the travel guides. They can't do a rush job. Call Harper's instead. They're faster and much more reliable. Okay. Hello? National Express. 
I need to get a package to Australia ASAP. If Harper's can't make the color copies that fast, we'll take black and white. Bob, are you reprinting the tickets? Yep. Hello. I need to get 25 color documents printed right away. Yes, it's very much a hurry. Who are you calling, Mr. Evans? What's that? Oh, uh, my tailor. Your tailor? These sleeves are too long. They're driving me crazy. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for fixing my mistake with Mr. Wells. Now, I've asked Cheryl to plan a party for his group next Friday, and I'd like for everyone to help. Cheryl, do you have a plan? Yes, I do. Marie, I'd like to have you choose the restaurant for the party. I'd love to. Bob, I'll let you choose the menu. You will? Mm -hmm. Paul, could you plan the music? Yes. Good. Now, Marie, I called ten restaurants and had them give us a price for a party room. These two had the best prices. <laughs> the green room is a nice restaurant. Great. That's my favorite, too. <laughs> now, Bob, about the food. I was thinking steak and potatoes well, and... Well, the client asked for fish or chicken. So, I had the restaurant put together a menu with each. Which do you like better? I like chicken more than fish, I guess. Great. Chicken it is. <laughs> now, Paul. Let me guess. So you have a list of music choices. <laughs> yes. These look fine. Great. I think we're all done. You see how easy it is to plan something when we do it all together. <laughs> so glad we could help. Another wonderful dinner, Cheryl. Thank you. You're welcome. I really enjoy cooking, actually. When I was young, I thought I was going to be a chef. You could be a chef. These cookies are fantastic. Why didn't you become a chef? My mother talked me out of it. She thought I would always have to work at night. She was afraid I would never meet a man and get married. She was probably right. If you were a chef, you wouldn't have met Bob. How do you know? Before he met you, Bob only ate fast food. <laughs> it's true. Your mother must have been very happy when you and Bob got engaged. She was. Hey, you'll never guess what Bob was going to be. Cheryl. A rock musician. A uh, basketball player? No. Bob was going to be a dancer. He was actually in the state ballet when he was young. No kidding. You never told me this. I could have been a great dancer. <laughs> what made you change your mind? The diet was too hard. I had to stop eating everything. Chocolate cake, fried chicken, potato chips. I tried. I might have been able to do it. But then they said, no more bread and butter. <laughs> bread and butter, can you believe it? And that was the end. Wow, Bob. I never knew. Do you enjoy watching ballet at all? I can't. I'd like to. But as soon as the music starts, I get very, very... hungry. <laughs> What about you, Mr. Evans? What did you think you were going to be when you were younger? If I tell you, will you try not to laugh? Of course. I always thought I would have my own television program to talk about etiquette. I didn't know you were so interested in etiquette. I have always loved etiquette. I think I would have made a great television etiquette teacher. Well? I think you could still do it. It's perfect for you. Really? Why? Well, you're very polite, for one thing. You always know which fork to use at a restaurant? 
that's a real talent. You've taught me a lot about the customs of other cultures. Maybe I could still give it a try. Today's topic, dinner conversation. If your international guests look offended and are leaving the table early, you've probably chosen a topic that's taboo in their home country. Find out what's acceptable and what's not. Coming up on International Etiquette with Evans. What do you think? Wow. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Unforgettable. You have a real talent, all right? <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. I didn't know that planning a wedding would be so hard. Mm. Marie, could you give us your opinion on a few things? I'd love to. First, how many people should we invite? Bob wants a small wedding. Uh, Twenty guests would be nice. I want a large wedding. About 300 people. 300? <laughs> Yesterday you said 200. I have a lot of relatives who want to come. Then there's the location. I always thought I'd get married in a park or at the beach. That's so romantic. I would like to get married indoors, where I won't get wet if it's raining. That makes sense. I prefer traditional music in the ceremony. Contemporary music. <laughs> I'd like a long ceremony and a short reception. I want a short ceremony and a huge celebration afterwards. I want a white cake. And I want... A chocolate cake. I know. How are we ever going to agree on this? Don't hurt yourself. Here's an idea that might work. Plan a wedding that's big enough to include all of Cheryl's family, sorry Bob, in the park on Oak Street that has that building where you can go if it rains. You can have traditional music in the ceremony and contemporary music at the party. And you could have two cakes at the reception, one white and one chocolate. Sounds okay to me. Me too. Hey, we did it! Oh, yay! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh, Marie, thank you so much. You're amazing. We couldn't have done it without you. Hi. Lunch time is over. Are you coming up to the office? I'm too tired to go back to the office. Planning a wedding is hard work. I need a holiday. <laughs> Let's make today a holiday. We'll tell Mr. Evans we can't come back to work. That's a great idea. What are we celebrating? You're getting married. How about National Wedding Day? What happens on National Wedding Day? I don't know. Why am I the one who has to think about it? Why don't we make it National Singles Day instead? All the married people give gifts to their single friends. <laughs> no. Buying gifts is hard work. I want to enjoy myself on our new holiday. What about a red day? Everybody wears red clothes, and there's dancing in the street that goes on all night. How about national buy your friend another cup of coffee? <laughs> nice try. How about national on time day? <laughs> what happens on national on time day? You remind one another to come back to work on time. <laughs> Happy holiday. <laughs> Waitress. So, Mrs. Beatty, 
you're looking for an exciting place for your next vacation. I usually travel to major cities in Europe, but this time I want to go someplace different, someplace away from the city, as long as it's safe. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Ah. How about California? The Big Sur area is spectacular. California has lots of earthquakes, doesn't it? Well, they have earthquakes occasionally, but not very often. But it does have earthquakes. Yes. I'm not going. Okay. How about some place in Asia? A beach in Thailand? Kochang has beautiful beaches, and it's very quiet there. A quiet beach sounds nice. But they said on the news there's a monsoon in Thailand. <laughs> but the monsoon will be over by the time you go. What else can you recommend? Australia. The Australian outback is amazing. I've heard they have tornadoes in Australia. In some parts. Where else? Jamaica? Hurricanes. South Africa? Floods. Hawaii? Landslide. You know a lot about natural disasters, don't you, Mrs. Beatty? Let's see. What about Finland? Finland? It's wild, beautiful, and very different from other parts of Europe. And nothing bad ever happens in Finland. Finland sounds good. I'll go to Finland. <laughs> Great. I'll book your tickets. <laughs> okay. I just booked your tickets to Helsinki, Finland. You'll be staying at the Palace Hotel. That's great. Excuse me, Mr. Evans. Yes, Marie. Mr. Woods is on the phone. He told me to tell you it's urgent. Urgent? He's traveling, you know. Yes. He said there's some kind of epidemic. What kind of epidemic? It sounds like it's that new influenza. But he was vaccinated for that before he left. I know, but... He told me to tell you that he wants to fly home today. On the internet, it says only three people are sick. That is not an epidemic. And it's not like anybody's dying from this flu. He said he didn't want to be the first. <laughs> Where is he traveling, may I ask? He's in Finland. Finland? I just booked tickets to Finland. Mrs. Beatty, everything will be fine. You'll get vaccinated and you'll have nothing to worry about. I'm not going to Finland. You told me nothing bad ever happens in Finland. Mrs. Beatty, I can't think of anywhere in the world you can go and be completely safe. Right here in this city, you could go outside and get hit by a bus. But you can't let that stop you from doing the things you want to do. <laughs> Look, why don't we go to lunch and we'll talk it over. I don't think she's going anywhere. Hello, Bob. Dining alone? Uh, Paul and Marie went to get newspapers. Do you mind if I join you? Oh, please, sit down. May I ask what you're reading? Um... <laughs> the History of the World. <laughs> the bestseller? I'm very impressed. Reading nonfiction over lunch? I hear that it's a very difficult book. Uh... No, it's... It's a pretty easy read. I... I can't put it down, actually. <laughs> a real page-turner, huh? Do you think that I could borrow it when you're done? Sure. I usually prefer fiction myself. You know, thrillers, mysteries. There's nothing like curling up with a good science fiction novel, is there? 
<laughs> you read science fiction too? <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Are you learning a lot from your book? Uh, yeah, I think so. So, tell me what you're reading about right now. Um, this part is about Great Britain. <laughs> really? Do you mind if I take a look? <laughs> Cheryl hates when I read comics. Then I can understand why you can't put the book down. <laughs> you think that I could borrow it then? Well, I'm still reading this one, but I have another one I can loan you. I meant this one. <laughs> oh. Help yourself. Look at this. The paper says that a tornado carried a woman for 300 miles and she lived to tell about it. I'm not sure if you know this, but that story isn't true. It's in the paper. It must be true. That paper is trash. I can't believe you're reading it. What do you mean? It's fiction. It's not news. Nothing in there is true. If you want real news, you have to read this paper. That paper is boring. This one's much more interesting. Woman gives birth to cow. Man builds house from bread. Baby with two heads? Come on, this is offensive. Storm kills 100 in Texas. Train accident kills five, injures more. Man kills wife and son. I'm sorry, but all that death and destruction is pretty offensive to me. I know that these things happened, and I know that those didn't. You don't know that. You just assume that it's true. Let's ask Bob and Mr. Evans what paper they read. <laughs> Never mind. Let's just read. That sounds good to me. Look at this. A man with four legs. <laughs> what are those wacky glasses you're wearing? These are ultra high tech, top of the line, state of the art, cutting edge TV glasses. And you're actually watching TV right now? Yeah, right here in the corner. What are you watching? The basketball game. Unbelievable. And Cheryl doesn't mind this? Yes! What? <laughs> Sorry, my team's winning. This new invention doesn't bother you. Are you kidding? If I'd known how happy they would make him, I would have bought those glasses for Bob long ago. Technology today is amazing. You know, I wish they'd invent something that would make people who talk on cell phones quieter. This guy in the cafe today was so loud I couldn't hear myself talking. <laughs> it wasn't funny. What? Oh, sorry. I was laughing at this guy on TV. <laughs> If I could invent something, it would be a thing for Bob's car that would automatically charge him when he goes over the speed limit. He drives so fast sometimes, but he'd slow down if he had to pay. No! Is your team losing? No! I heard what you said. You just leave my car alone. <laughs> Wait till you see what I've got. What is it? Well, I have this problem with my cell phone. Whenever I'm traveling with a group, I can never hear it ring or feel it vibrate. So I got this thing that lets me know whenever my phone is ringing. How does it do that? It buzzes me. Buzzes? You know, bzz, bzz. so uh, I could feel it. Does it work? I don't know. No one's called me yet. What? Oh, someone's calling me. Oh, ow. Hello? 
Hello? No one's there. Wow. That was a big buzz. That almost hurt. Maybe it isn't working right. No, it's working fine. Who? Oh. 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 Another phone call. Hello? Hello? That's strange. Man, if I ever get used to that, I'll always know whenever my phone is ringing. Oh. Paul, if I were you, I would take that thing back to the store before you hurt yourself. I'm going. I'll see you later. Oh. I hope he can drive okay. He'll be fine. How do you know? I'll stop calling him. <laughs> Did you see the politicians expect to raise taxes again? Really? What has the government decided to spend our money on now? They're planning to build a stronger military. It's wrong to spend so much on the military. They should spend it on education instead. Can we please avoid discussing politics? Why? Every time we begin talking about politics, people get mad at each other. They should spend more money on fighting corruption. <laughs> if they were able to stop corrupt officials, maybe they wouldn't need to raise our taxes. That's true, but I think we need to spend more money on the military. Without a strong military, the world won't be very safe. That's one way to look at it, but maybe the world would be safer and better if we tried to eliminate poverty. What do you think, Cheryl? I think that if I say what I really think, you'll get all mad and call me crazy or ridiculous. Cheryl, don't be so afraid. We're only talking. I think that the government should spend more money on cooking schools. What? Most people don't know how to cook well. I think the government should help teach them. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Are you crazy? Use our taxes to pay for cooking school. <laughs> of course not. But look at you. You're all mad at me. This is why I never discuss politics with friends. But don't let me stop you from getting mad at each other. <laughs> Are you traditional in your medical ideas? That is, do you kind of believe in Western medicine or do you like to explore non-traditional treatments such as acupuncture or homeopathic medicine? Um, I don't explore uh, non-traditional treatments as much as I would probably like to. I think there's probably a lot of merit in them and they haven't been studied enough. I'm more traditional than anything else in my, in my medication or my medical practices. I'm more for the naturalistic approach. I like, um, you know, more na natural um, herbal medicines. In your opinion, what are the advantages of traditional Western medicine and surgery? Uh, I think the enormous amount of research and, uh, and uh, proven fact that, that, that's behind our medicine uh, just uh, makes, it, makes me feel more comfortable with it. What do you see as maybe some disadvantages of Western medicine? Um, I think at times Western medicine can make the problem worse and trying to make problems better. Are there any non-traditional therapies that you use? Um, I drink a lot of tea, actually, so I guess that's pretty non-traditional. Um, usually when I feel myself coming down with something, I will take an echinacea, which is an herbal medicine. I'll, I'll prior drink a lot of orange juice since vitamin C helps you. But if I feel really sick, then I'll take a cough medicine. 
Could you tell me what your career or occupation is? I'm an elementary school teacher. My career path will be in marketing, helping uh, companies build their brand and help market products to uh, the general consumer. Um, I work in um, television and um, I would like to eventually produce and direct. Did you think that uh, you'd be in marketing when you were a child? Uh, no. I thought I'd be President of the United States <laughs> or drive a fire truck. What made teaching a good career for you? First of all, I love children and I liked the idea of imparting some of my knowledge to young ones. Everybody has skills, talents, and abilities. So, you know, some people are artistic, others have mechanical ability. What would you say are some of your skills? Um, I would say um, I have a lot of artistic ability. Um, I did a lot of art in um, school. Uh, good question. Uh, my skills and talents would be uh, coming up with new ideas, different ideas, creative ideas that kind of build a buzz around a product. Do you think that talents and abilities are genetic? I think they're a combination of both genetics and environment. I think that you are born with certain um, qualities that your parents, I think, are, have and, and just living with the people around you and, and, and um, learning from your teachers and those that you're constantly interacting with, you pick up certain skills. You're from Germany. What is a wedding like in Germany? Well, first of all, you have to have a civil ceremony where you go to, um, to the city hall and, you, well, you make, it, you make everything official. And then, traditionally, you go to church and have the religious ceremony. And is there a wedding reception afterward? Usually there is, of course. Um, after church, when everybody's waiting for the broom and the bride coming out and throwing rice at them and flowers, and then the whole crew is going to a nice place, having dinner and having a party. You mentioned that uh, your family's originally from Ghana. Yes. Could you tell me a little bit about the uh, courtship and, and marriage ceremonies of your country? Um, there is a traditional, sometimes they do involve like the American type of wedding, the very traditional, you walk down the aisle and, but they also, in, um, there is also the traditional part in African culture and um, you wear the clothing, the outfits, it's much longer, um, sometimes it can go into the next day, some people it extends. Tell me about the reception. They find a place to go to or it's uh, out outside sometimes it's a big tent like it just depends on the bride and groom and what they want and there's tons of dancing traditional dancing um, eating lots of food um, sometimes you have somebody come in and talk about how they know him and how um, how good he is and what he's done and you know people given thoughts of wisdom of how to be together and it just it's just really a great thing <laughs> How do you feel about prohibiting smoking indoors? As a smoker, I don't appreciate it all the time, but uh, I, can, I can understand why. I think it's fantastic. Um, I think it's great. If you, don't, if you go to restaurants and nobody can smoke, the food tastes better and your clothes don't smell. How about censorship of books or movies by a government? I am 100% against censorship of any books or movies or any expression um, of creativity. Um, and I feel that when governments try to censor books or movies, then it creates a, a sort of atmosphere of, of fear and people don't get to, don't have uh, ready access to information that um, should be available to them. If you could tell me maybe two things that you think are big problems in the world today. I think one of the biggest problems is war, and I think another big problem is racism in this world. And of those, could you tell me um, you know, a little bit more about what you think could be done to uh, alleviate these problems? I think actually with both problems, it's mostly about understanding each other and sitting down on a table and talk and get to know each other and, and um, 
be able to make more compromises and, and understand different cultures and reasons why people do certain things certain ways. And I think we would all be much happier. Communication. Communication, that's the, that's the clue, exactly, yeah. day 
likes each other well In a language we all understand The sky above fills with the light Of fireworks exploding as we dance along the street tonight It's a song that people sing It's the laughter that you bring on an endless holiday Human heart, and you don't know. 